also have these services on YouTube, and the church website will be downloaded later. Does anybody have an announcement this morning? Any announcements? CJ. This Thursday, 9 to 11, we're going to have a little Dunkin' Donuts group. So if you want coffee or donuts, maybe you better get it yourself because I don't know who's going to show up, so I'm not going to buy a lot. I might buy my own. But um, <laughs> 9 to 11, we're going to meet at the park if, you're, if you'd like to come. Um, it's just this time for fellowship. Uh, we have discussion on God and the Bible and many other things. So if you'd like to come out and join us, we'd like to have you. Thank you, CJ. Thursday, 9 o'clock at the park. Sound park? Sound park. Okay. In one of the pavilions. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? We have a youth group at 6 o'clock, right? 6 o'clock tonight, okay? Anybody else have an announcement? Do we have any joys this morning? Oh, I had another announcement here. I almost forgot. <laughs> newsletter. July newsletter. Fresh <coughs> off the press. Uh, raise your hand if you'd like to have one. There's a stack of them in the back, and maybe somebody could pass them around. Anybody like a copy of your guidance? Okay. Over here to my far left, if somebody could grab one. Oh, I can give it later. Thanks, Sandy. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Okay, I was about to ask any, all oh, communion. And song sheets. Anybody need a song sheet? Raise your hand if you need a song sheet. Okay, over here. How about communion? Everybody have these little pre-packaged communion cups? You need one? Okay. Uh, Mary Jane, uh, over here, straight in front. Yeah. Anybody else? Pre-packaged community cup? Hey, Pastor Ken. You might yeah. just want to announce that next week they will be having service. Right. Next Sunday, we will start back out in the traditional worship service. I actually mentioned it in this, this newsletter. I talked with Lana, and she's good with that. Um, Although you will have to wear a mask for that service, but you will get to listen to her beautiful organ class. So, um, if you'd like to come at 9 o'clock and enjoy Lana's music, um, we're going to have a service starting next Sunday. Anybody have a joy this morning? Yes.
also knows that could uh, be so However, bad. I just walked in, so let me add, he oh. tried to take a finger off yesterday. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 Stay away from everything and please heal from Yeah, that. after he did that, he's like, I'm just going to go sit in a corner. I said, it'd be better if you did. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it wasn't even a power tool. Uh, no more self-mutilated. <laughs> yeah. He grabbed a saw blade by the blade. So. Anybody else have a joy this morning? Yeah. Well, it was nice to have Sunday school this morning. Well, we had a good discussion on how to try to be more Christ-like in these times. And um, next Sunday, we'll be having adult Sunday school again. Um, next Sunday, though, I think we'll have it downstairs because we have a video for our lessons. So we'd like to see you all there. And... Um, it's, it's a good time to uh, not only self-reflect, but to share testimony, to share uh, your life and what God does in your life, and also maybe learn how to uh, deal with things better yourself from other people's experiences. So we would like to see everybody there next Sunday. Thank you, CJ. Anybody else have a joy this morning? Stephen will be on American soil in less than a month. Oh, wow. I bet mom's happy about that. Yeah. And he, he sent me a picture of a camel spider. I don't know if you all have ever seen one. But it's like it was like the size of his palm. And um, they run like 10 miles per hour. <laughs> and they hide in the shade. So they have found them in different places of the helicopter because they hide in the shade of the helicopter. So um, and he's terrified of spiders. So what? It's a very pleasant, but uh, they're a mix between a, a spider and a scorpion. Uh, they sting, I believe. Oh, that sounds like something I would not want yeah. to confront. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was one of his fears of going over there. Oh, I know. It's a I can understand. Any other joys this morning? Do we have our graduates here this morning? Can I ask the graduates to stand up for me? When the graduates stand up, could we celebrate? Thank you. I'm glad you're here this morning with us. Thank you. Does anybody have a prayer concern this morning? I do. A little girl, a little, a 12-year-old girl, uh, just lost her battle with cancer. Continue prayers for Joni, please. Okay. Uh, who else? Other prayer concerns? Any other prayer concerns? Um, Kenny Diener um, um, is battling cancer. Cancer. What was the first thing? Kenny. 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 It's hard to hear. Can you repeat the prayer request? Oh, sure. That was Kenny uh, battling cancer, and um, prayers for the family of Megan, who um, twelve-year-old little girl that passed away uh, from cancer, and uh, Joni for anxiety. Uh, prayers for Kathy Jenkins, the Kathy from Lewistown that had the heart attack a few days ago. She's home and, and doing well. Uh, Chuck spoke to her daughter. She's home and doing well. We need her in prayer. So that was she Kathy helped. recovering from a heart attack? Yeah, she helps with the closed closet. Oh, yeah, that's right. She helps with the closed yeah. closet. Any other prayer requests? Um, just to reverse another praise, I've seen that Isabel just showed up. 
I wanted to acknowledge her. She's one of our graduates at F as well. Isabel's here. Isabel? She's one of our graduates. Good to see her here. Yes, it is. And her mom and dad. Not so much for mom and dad. <laughs> Other prayer requests. And of course we need to keep Connie in our prayers as she's recovering from her stroke. No other prayer requests? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's good to have our graduates this morning. We are proud of them. They've worked hard. And today, we celebrate. We ask that you be with them on their journey in life, wherever that journey leads them, that your Holy Spirit would be with them, to know that you love them, and to know that you walk with them. Heavenly Father, we lift up our prayer concerns for Johnny, for anxiety, Lord, to continue struggle, and we ask that she'll be able to um, get the help that she needs, uh, to find peace with herself. Lord, we lift up the family of Megan, a 12-year-old girl who just passed away from cancer. is tragic. And we ask that your Holy Spirit will comfort the family, friends, extended family, loved ones, and be with them in this terrible time. Lord, we lift up Kenny, who is battling cancer, we ask your Holy Spirit to provide strength, healing in his body. We lift up Kathy to you, who had a heart attack, uh, but is recovering and got to go home, and we're thankful for that, and we pray for continued strength and healing. We lift up Connie, who has a stroke, and is at uh, Connie Town Rehab Center. Uh, we ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to work in her body, that she will make a full recovery. We lift up these concerns and other concerns this morning, Lord, um, for those who have contacted COVID-19 for physical healing, for our doctors and nurses and the medical staff who are on the front lines every day battling this disease. We thank you for their service and we pray that you will provide them protection. We pray for our scientists and researchers that they may find a vaccine soon. We lift up those in our hospitals, those in the nursing homes, those in the rehab centers who cannot be visited at this time. Um, they feel lonely and isolated. Uh, we pray that you'll be with them in a special way through this period of time. Let them know that they are loved and cared for. We pray for our small businesses that have suffered um, tremendous financial loss during this time. We pray for our small businesses, and we thank you for our small business owners, Lord. We lift them up to you. We also pray for those that are unemployed at this time because of COVID-19. We lift them up to you as well, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray um, that we will help build bridges in our lives, um, that we will fight racism, and we will all be instruments of your peace. Lord, we pray these prayers and any other prayers at this time that are on our hearts. We lift up to you in a moment of silence. Thank you, Lord, for always hearing our prayers. We pray this in the name of the risen Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
guy who just read a couple songs in his Charles Weston.
time to love this enough. Come in the flesh to give your life for us. What greater love is this? Lay down your life for our sin. Heavenly Father, we come before you to worship this morning, Lord, just to worship your name. We just pray that you give Pastor Kennedy brings the message. Open our hearts and minds to receive the Holy Spirit and receive the message that you have for us out of the Word of God. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to add something I forgot. I apologize. And it's really important. We have a senior that's not able to be with us today because he joined the military about a week and a half ago, Noel Romero. He is the United States Marines. And uh, just like Jen did for my son, and my son appreciated it very much, the love and care packages, me and my wife are going to be starting that once I get uh, Melissa, his mom's address, for Noel, we're going to do a little care package for Noel as well, because I know that's important and that makes him feel good. So he's in basic training for the Marines right now. So uh, praise him and uh, lift him up and surround him, you know, with God's protection. So absolutely. In fact, I talked to his mom too, yes. and she told me so. I told her to get the address to me, okay, and then I'll put it out in the newsletter. But yeah, we need to be very proud of that young man. Yes. Yes, yeah. definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Speaking of graduates, um, there are two graduates that couldn't be here this morning. Um, Hannah Johnston uh, couldn't be with us this morning. And Maddie, uh, Maddie couldn't be with us this morning. Maddie Wilson. And we just, uh, Williams? Oh, Williams, sorry. But we do have some graduates with us this morning. Yes. So could I ask Joshua McCleet to come on down? <laughs> and maybe if you could just, you folks would just line up here and face in the folks. So. Face them so they can see what <laughs> I love your post, by the way. I see. Yeah, yeah. They're so clever. Thanks. I hope they're paying you for all this advertising. Every now and then. Okay. Um, Isabel? Isabel. If you could come on now.
short, yes. Uh, well, I graduated from Wayne's Prairie Senior High School, and I'm going to be attending Sci College in the fall to uh, major in film and media arts. Great. Awesome. said to Noah and to his sons who were with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those who came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth, 
I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds. It will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood and destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all of life on the earth. And our second passage is from Peter. First. Peter chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After, he, after being made alive, he went and proclaimed, to the prison spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone to heaven and is the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers and submission to him. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a covenant God. You made a covenant with Noah with Father Abraham. And then, through the passage of time, he made a new covenant. And that new covenant was through Jesus Christ. We are the recipients of that new covenant, the covenant of which you paid a, a dear price for, the blood of your Son, Jesus. We thank you for that covenant, the expression of love, the expression that, that you will be with us always through that covenant. And yes, the expression of eternal life that comes with it. Help us to be good stewards of that covenant. Help us to be the disciples you have called us to be. And Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, and either through me or in spite of me, may your words speak to your people. In the name of the risen Christ, I pray. Amen. A friend of mine sent me an email just for the fun of it that said, All I needed to know about life, I learned from Noah's Ark. So, I'd like to read it to you this morning. Number one, don't miss the boat. Number two, we're all in the same boat. Number three, plan ahead. It wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. Number four, and I need to pay attention to this, stay fit when you're old. Someone might ask you to do something really big. Number five, don't listen to critics. Just get on with what needs to be done. Number six, for safety's sake, Travel in pairs. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, build your fortune on high ground. Number eight, speed isn't always an advantage. After all, the snails were on the same arc as the cheetahs. Number nine, when you're stressed, just float low. <laughs> 
Number 10, remember that amateurs built the ark, professionals built the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Number 11, the woodpecker inside was a greater threat than the storm outside. <laughs> Number 12, no matter what the storm, God is with you, and there will be a rainbow. The story of Noah, as we all know, is one of the best known and well-loved stories of the Old Testament. Why is that? Well, beyond the, you know, the, the story itself, I think it's because it's a story of God is a God who makes covenants and keeps covenants. We see that God made a covenant with Noah, his descendants, and every living creature on the earth. And the rainbow was a sign of that covenant that never again will the earth be destroyed by a flood. The rainbow was a sign of not only a covenant, but it was a sign of a new beginning. We read that in Noah's time, it, it was an evil time, and, and we see God's judgment upon the human race. But Noah and Noah's family found favor with God, and they were spared by building this ark. In this passage, we see God establishing a covenant with Noah, his descendants, and every living creature. And basically, a covenant is just an agreement, an agreement between two parties. It's like a contract or a treaty. In the case of this covenant with God, God is the superior party, and God takes the initiative to establish the covenant, to make the agreement. And God made the agreement with Noah, and it's not the other way around. So many times in our life, we want to make a covenant with God, but we want to do it on our terms. But that's just not how it works. That God has given us a covenant that we can make through Jesus Christ. But it's Christ who initiated that covenant. Talking about the rainbow, though, did you know that ancient people thought the rainbow was a weapon? I didn't know this until I got the seminary. That back in those in ancient civilizations, they thought the rainbow was a weapon that God used lightning bolts down from the heavens. That God shot, shot out lightning bolts from the heavens. So when ancient people saw the rainbow in the cloud, they became very fearful because they thought it was a sign of punishment. It was a very fearful sight. It was a sight of destruction. But here we see that, that God re-symbolized the rainbow, and now it's no longer a symbol of destruction. It's now a symbol, symbol of deliverance. It's a reminder of God's covenant that God made with Noah and future generations and all of them. Today we have another covenant, and that new covenant is through Jesus Christ. Just as God established the first covenant with Noah and all the living creatures on earth, God has established a new covenant with us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Just as God provided a way of salvation for Noah during the flood, God has provided a way of salvation for us. Just as God provided a symbol of that covenant for, for Noah through the rainbow, God has provided a symbol of the, of the new covenant of Jesus Christ for us through the cross. Noah's sign of remembrance was a rainbow. Our sign of remembrance is an empty tomb and a cross. Another thing I, I was surprised to learn in seminary that the early church did not initially use the cross as its first symbol of faith. The reason why they didn't first use the cross because it, to them, it symbolized the horror of being crucified. So they could actually remember seeing Christ die on the cross and the horror that brought in their heads, in their memories. So what those early apostles did was they often used the symbol of the ark. And Christian art, the very early Christian art, you will often see depicted 
the ark, a drawing of the ark. And for them, the drawing of the ark stood for the church. It stood for salvation. And all people that are in the ark were saved through the salvation of Jesus Christ. For them, the ark stood for a second chance. It was the symbol of the new covenant now. It was now a covenant of grace. The ark stood for a sense of protection, a sense of safety, a sense of hope in a very in a dying world. First Peter says that in his letter, and his letter was written to newly baptized believers in that very first Christian century. For Peter says the sufferings of Christ were real, were real, and the sufferings that you will experience are real and they're very painful. But remember the victory we have through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have seen his resurrection. We know that that eternal life belongs to us as well. The readers of 1 Peter were reminded that, that following Christ was going to bring a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. It was very serious business. To be a follower of Jesus Christ in that first century was very difficult. Because to follow Jesus Christ in the first century might mean that you're going to lose your job. It might mean that you're going to be rejected by family and friends. It might mean that you'll be martyred. To follow Jesus Christ in the first century was very countercultural. And Peter wants the readers to know that they're going to be tested. They're going to be tested and he wants them to know that they may at times feel like walking away. In fact, many will be in danger of walking away from the faith. But Peter is writing this letter as a letter of encouragement, a letter to strengthen their faith, saying that, don't worry, Christ is with you, and Christ has saved a place for you. And even though there, there are few of you in numbers, that you will be saved, that Christ was, was saved by his resurrection. And that resurrection of Christ is symbolized in your baptism. You'll be saved just as Noah was saved from the waters of the flood, but this time the water of baptism. Peter's message was a word of hope. It was a word of reminder to keep life in perspective. It's important that we keep life in perspective and, and focus on our values in life and, and make the best, pop, the best pop, uh, positive decisions that we can make in life. What takes priority in your life? What is the number one priority in your life? What is most valuable to you? There's a story I'd like to share um, that was shared with me about um, a businessman. And this businessman was visiting a, a coastal village. He was on vacation. And he noticed a small boat, and there was just one fisherman pulling in to the dock. Inside the small boat were several large yellowfish tuna. And the businessman complimented complimented the fisherman on the fish, and he asked the fisherman how long it took him to make that catch. Only a little while, the fisherman replied. The businessman asked, well, why didn't he stay out longer to catch more fish? The man said, well, I, I have enough to support my family's needs. And the businessman asked, well, what do you do with the rest of your time? And the fisherman said, well, you know, I, I go to church, I eat dinner with my wife, and then in the evenings I like to stroll into the village and play guitar with my friends. And the businessman shook his head in, in disappointment and said, sir, you really should spend more time fishing, and, and with the proceeds, you could buy a bigger boat. And with the... And eventually, you could even buy a fleet of boats. 
And then you could cut out the middleman, and you could open your own cannery, and you could control the product, and you could control the processing, and you could control the distribution. The fisherman looked at the fellow and said, well, how long will this all take? And the businessman said, well, it's quite an undertaking, I must admit. I imagine it's going to take you about 15 to 20 years. <laughs> but what then, the fisherman asked. Well, that's the best part. When the time is right, you could sell your company, you could sell the stock of your company to the public, and you could become very rich, and you could make millions. Millions, the fisherman asked, but, but what then? The businesses said, well, then you could retire and move to a place where you could go to church and have dinner with your wife and play guitar with your friends. <laughs> As we tend to get older, we, we realize what truly is important in life. As we reflect on God's covenant of grace through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, maybe learn a little bit more about ourselves, a little bit more about God, and a little bit more about what is truly important in life. Amen. Now that covenant that Jesus Christ made with us was really a two-part covenant. He promised us that he would come again. We don't know when the second coming of Christ will be, but he did promise he would come again. So it's something that we hope, we hope for. And um, if there's anyone watching or anybody that's not a follower of Christ and would like to be, I'd like to offer this prayer. And if you all would join in uh, with me this morning. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and you raised him from the dead. I want to make him my Lord and Savior. Send your Holy Spirit in my life and help me to be the person you want me to be. Help me to know that you love me no matter what and are always with me. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, I'd like you to take your communion kits with me and let us share a communion this morning together. On the night in which Christ was betrayed, he took the disciples to the upper room and after seeing them around the table, he took bread and gave it to the disciples. He blessed it and said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat of it as often as you will, and remember it to me. And then when the meal was over, he took the cup and he said, This is my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it as often as you will in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the bread and the cup. May they be truly to us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And may it strengthen our faith until you come again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Father, we come to this situation, and Lord, it's so easy to look at what we might be doing to be able to be successful in the world. But we have a Father. I just pray that your Holy Spirit would be on the five young people, six including Justin, and we just thank you, Lord, for, for their lives. And I just pray, Father, that you would prepare them for whatever you would have them do in the kingdom of God. As Ken's already said, that sometimes you start down one path and you end up somewhere else. But Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would remind them that each step of the way, that you are with them, that you love them, and that you will carry them through the completion. In your name we pray. And also, Father, not only for the graduates, uh, the ones that aren't here, uh, we just lift them up as well. And Amen. Father, um, Amen. we know that your hand is on each one of these individuals, Lord, but also uh, prayers for us as parents and uncles and aunts and family members of the church. Um, just help us to be good examples for these young folks and um, help us to um, show your love the best we can and help us to um, not only be followers of yours but also be good role models for these young folks and um, I think that's just as important as everything else we've said and um, I think it's awesome that we can be out here this morning I think it's awesome that you've given us such a good group of young people and 
We just thank you and give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. And now may the love of God, the grace and peace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.